Howdy, I'm Mackenzie from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm excited to share with you today the top 10 games of 2020 that are brand new to our board game library. So these are definitely keepers and definitely things we're excited to play and excited to share with other people. So let's go ahead and start the list with number 10. So the first one we have is Forgotten Waters. It's a very, um, very thematic, very beautiful game that is app driven. And in this game, you are very simply a pirate, a pirate in a magical world, exploring and having fun. It is a lot of dice rolling. It is a lot of beautiful, big art pages. And it's ran through this online app that does all the narration for you, which is great. It's my favorite type of app integration, where it's playing in the background, and you can just hear the brilliant voice actors they got for it. And it really ties the whole experience together. Honestly, if I could just listen to the voice actors go on and tell the story, that would be enough for me. But it had some very fun um, mechanics with fighting and the really goofy Mad Libs kind of structured storytelling. And it's just fun. It is a great game for a large group of people. For number nine, my number is Alter Quest. So Alter Quest is a dungeon crawler. That's an homage to Hero Quest. But in this game, everything you do is modular. So your villain that you fight is unique. Your heroes are unique. Your map that you're in, every room you enter is going to be randomly generated from this set of cards. And these cards are all modular and you can mix and match and build the dungeon how you want to build it. There's also this great story mode that you can go through and it's got two stories with all of the stretch goals and the additional content from the expansions, but wow, it's pretty fantastic. Um, the mana system is also really fascinating. It kind of floats in the air of the dungeon, and whenever you consume it, you pop out a new one, and you're kind of determining whether it's worth it to spend it, because if you do spend it, it might turn into something an enemy might be able to use it. So you're really putting this risk on, do I imbue myself with this power, but I might accidentally give my, my enemies that power as well. So number nine is Alter Quest, fantastic. Number eight is Tekenyu, Obelisk of the Sun. This is the best tea game from this year. It is a dice drafting game set in Egypt. So already I'm pretty sold. I really like Egypt, but this game in particular is very tight. It's 16 turns and you know exactly what turn it is in the game. You're drafting dice one at a time until you get four and then eight and then 12 and 16 and then boom, the game is over. And building temples, having really cool technology cards and the starting goal that you get at the beginning of the game honestly defines the way you're going to play. So it's very exciting to kind of tackle a specific strategy in this game when you only have 16 turns to accomplish it. The resource gathering mechanic is really interesting. I love that you are weighing on the scales. So you actually have the Mott scales and you are weighing your dice, your corrupt and your pure dice. And it is a fantastic game in my opinion. And it's one of the better dice drafting games I've played. Number eight is going to be, oh, that wasn't great, sorry. Number eight was Tekenyu. So number seven is Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Small package Gloomhaven, um, what more can I say? This is a great introduction. It is very beginner friendly, has a fantastic tutorial, but it's also good for people who've played Gloomhaven. I myself, uh, my wife and I, we went through it in about three months, finished the campaign, um, played it with all sorts of other people, and played it a second time this last year. And now we are pretty happy with this new smaller system. It adds new characters, so even more new stuff to try, and they're very unique even from those in the base box. So very happy with this. It's more of the same Gloomhaven, but with less setup, and it's fantastic for that reason. My favorite part of this game is definitely the scenario book. You have the terrain and the map tiles printed on the book, so you don't even have to worry about it. It's so nice to not have to worry about setting up that those map tiles. It takes out a whole step and really honestly makes it more exciting and more enticing to play the game because you're like, wow, I can get this started and get this going. Fantastic, Jaws of the Lion. It's number one for a reason, regular Gloomhaven. So this is a fantastic entry to the series. So number six is going to be Project Elite. And this is the reprint by Simon. So Project Elite is one of the, is it might be, oh man, it's definitely my favorite real-time game, but it's one of the best cooperative games I've played. There's 
positively no quarterbacking and if it is it's kind of shouting frantically and very garbled tones because no one can really understand you you don't have time to focus on someone else you just have to trust them and that is fantastic the idea that you just have to trust your friend to know what to do that's it you you have to tell them something and say hey can you please do that but you're not telling them how to do that you're just asking for as much help as they can and they decide on the spot if hey do i have time for this or do i not you are taking down aliens as they're swarming your base and making sure that everybody is protected because honestly it's up to you to make sure no one dies it is a team effort so fantastic i love the different bosses and my favorite thing from this has to be the honestly the the two expansions that came with it the death maw valley and the exosuits so the exosuits provide a really cool challenge and give you some really powerful abilities so you feel like this amazing champion as you play and then after that you have death Mon valley where it introduces the giant sandworm with multiple bodies it's a much faster experience because there, you have a limited amount of time before this worm gets to your base and on ultimately destroys it so you really have to get down and set up traps and take care of it before it's too late so really rewarding gameplay and just really fun i also just love the map for the uh, sandworm it's just a big straight line but for some reason i really enjoy this open field and you kind of just mow down the bad guys and you run straight through the sand as the worm is rolling around fantastic so it's number six project elite uh number five is a surprise honestly title blades heroes of the reef so this game uh was on kickstarter about two years ago and it came in the deluxe version this past month and holy cow, I was very impressed. The art direction is fantastic. It's a beautiful game. And the game itself really reminds me of the game Champions of Midgard, where you collect pools of dice and you use these dice to complete uh, challenges. And these challenges vary in difficulty and you can decide to push your luck on them to get even more points and abilities. But wow, it just screams flavor. And I was really apprehensive about this game at first because I heard some reviews that said that... Um, it had a lot of downtime. You weren't really interested in what other people were doing, but I did not experience these things. I was very impressed with how exciting each turn was for everybody. Uh, with higher player counts, the map is very tense. Uh, you're kind of scared about the monsters that are sitting there, and you're you're honestly just excited for everybody to do their competition. It is very cool. I love the flavor of the different characters. There are so many different abilities that you get, and even if you play the same character multiple times, you can choose completely different paths from the very beginning of the game. It is so fun. It is super exciting, and I love the challenge mechanic and the different traits, and wow. If I had to pick a favorite thing from this game, it'd have to be the unique power cards. I love that you get to craft your own character and even with just one power card, you are vastly different and you might go in a different direction than you normally would. Number four is Dune Imperium. Very surprised on this one as well. It came at the end of uh, beginning of December, end of the year, and this game is smooth. It is satisfying. It is a satisfying game. Something about the going to a space and playing a card just feels real good. It reminds me of Underwater Cities a little bit, where you are using your cards to go to places, um, but you get to choose these cards. And that's the key, where you are deciding what you put in your deck. So when you deck build, you're not just buying crap, you're putting stuff into your deck in order to facilitate the strategy you're going for. And when you have them in your hand, you can play them or you can hold on to them for additional effects. And sometimes you want to do both and the decision is amazing. I love it. I love so much the the battle system is actually pretty fantastic as well because once again um, you have to make a decision. Do you commit stuff to this battle that's happening or do you hold on to things and maybe buy some new things for your deck? But it, it has really interesting decision spaces. The worker spots make a lot of sense and the theme is fantastic. I was so impressed. Like the I've played the regular Dune board game. I really like it. I love the theme in that. But the theme is so good here too. And I was so happy that it took the world of Dune and completely made a different game around it. It is not just dudes on a map. This is a, it is a very Euro-y game with a great combat mechanism. And I was very, very impressed with Dune Imperium. My number three is Etherfields. So Etherfields is the new Dreamwalker. The Dreamcrawler? Dreamcrawler from Awaken Realms. So I really enjoy this Dreamcrawler. 
you go from small slumbers to large dreams and I actually just finished playing a scenario a little bit ago. Um, each of these scenarios are so varied and the monsters that you face and the mechanics they introduce from dream to dream make sense. They are very interesting and they're very well done. Uh, there's a couple typos here and there that can sometimes throw you off or maybe put you in a spot, but the game itself is very cool. It is spot on dream experience. Um, playing with my wife the other day and she says, I have had this dream. And it was so interesting to hear her perspective. And um, I'm not going to say that she knew exactly where to go in the dream, but it was really funny because she had noticed a lot of this stuff that had happened before. So it's neat exploring this dream world and seeing the kooky creatures and scenarios that can come up from it. I highly recommend this one. It is a beautiful production. It is engaging. And when you finish, you kind of just want to keep going. It's one of those games you don't really want to put down. Uh, the deck building, my favorite thing here is the deck building itself. It's very slow, but when you buy new cards or when you earn new cards, um, there are some difficult choices because some cards are really weird and you want to figure out a way to make those work. And other cards are reminders of past missions. And so you might see these and be like, oh, I remember this. And you want to keep it because, hey, that's a really cool tidbit from that last adventure. And now you have this companion or this thing that you can bring with you in your deck and he shows up every once in a while. The art is fantastic as well. And I love the decisions between these cards because you're getting them so infrequently. So strongly recommend Aether Fields. Number two is Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Another hit in the Pandemic series. I think this is the easiest one, but I really enjoyed the new mechanic of the outbreaks. In this one, they're called Incidents. So no spoilers, this is obviously, it's going to be in the main rulebook, but the incidents, the way they work is if you have three agents and a new one would be placed, instead of putting stuff around them, you reveal a bottom card of the, um, the disease deck, and this will show a unique event that happens to incident tokens in a specific area. So this could be like putting more agents, getting rid of safe houses, ruining your progress. And you're terrified when this happens because this is a legacy game. It has lasting effects. So I really enjoyed that. There's also a passport system that's used in the game that is just a lot of fun. And I think that anybody who enjoys cooperative games, and if you are a pandemic fan, this is a no brain purchase. I would strongly recommend this one as well. And now my number one of the year is right above my shoulder, actually. It is Dwellings of Eldervale. So Dwellings of Eldervale is another crazy hit. I was so surprised how good this game was. It seemed very gimmicky, very goofy. With, uh, it even has these like bases that you put monsters on. And when they move, they make noises, which is so extra, but I love it. It might be the most extra thing in my collection outside of the uh, Trove Chest and the... Uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, big guy, but holy cow, it was, it's so fun. It is neat. The area control in it is fantastic. The battle system is very simple, but very cool. You always have a chance to win a battle, no matter how weak you are. Um, there's rewards all over the place. I love the resource system, the spell system, the way things move around. There's so many variants that you can use. There's a whole bunch of expansions that you can play with. Uh, my personal favorite is the Mother of Dragons expansion. I think that one is so fun, having this giant swooping creature that really changes the uh, landscape of the game. And whoever slays it, you are just a champion forever. Everyone will know you as the Dragon Slayer. Um, my favorite thing in the game, though, has to be... Oh, man. There's honestly so much here. But I think my favorite thing is definitely... It's the monsters. It's got to be the monsters, right? They charge into you to fight you. The basses, the sounds they make, spot on sound effects from the VFX. I love how imposing they are. And they have this wash on them that just makes them come to life. And there's even parts where you can tame them if you have that chaos magic. So very cool with the all the monsters. I just really enjoy Dwellings of Elder Vale. And that's my top 10. So once again, number 10, Forgotten Waters. 9, Alter Quest. 8, Tekenyu, Obelisk of the Sun. 7, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. 6, Project Elite. 5, Tidal Blades, Heroes of the Reef. 4, uh, Dune Imperium. 3, Aether Fields. 2, Pandemic Legacies, Season 0. And number 1 is Dwellings of Eldervale. I would recommend any of these games. I think you'll have a blast with all of them. Uh, obviously, some are going to tailor more. And if you were to pick one cooperative game, I think it would have to be the Pandemic Legacy Season 0.
of course, and then number one is probably Aether Fields for any competitive game. There are good solo modes in almost all of these, I believe. Uh, yeah, in all of these, they all have good solo modes, so recommend those as well. Um, and that's really it for my top 10 of 2020. Thank you so much for watching, and once again, remember, side game strong.